Hey there, welcome to another edition of Solve My Math Homework's Video Solutions. Okay, so this problem, uh, it didn't say what class it was. So we're going to say this could be geometry, this could be pre-calc, this could be algebra 2, because conic sections are done in all three classes. So it says to identify the conic section and write it in standard form. And we've got x squared plus y squared plus 6x minus 4y minus 3 all equals 0. Okay, so identifying it, because there's no xy term here, identifying this is actually quite easy. So uh, if there's an xy term, you have to use the discriminant and then see if it's less than 0 or equal to 0 and then see if some other factors are true. But that's not the case here. All of our terms are either x squared, y squared, x, y, or constants. So if we remind ourselves, okay, um, of the formulas, and I have those right here. So these are the different formulas for all the different um, conic sections. So we have an ellipse, and if it's horizontal, so if it's really wide, it's x squared min uh, minus h squared over a squared. Remember, a squared is your larger number, so when the larger number is under the x, it's horizontal. Uh, and then we flip it for vertical over here. Then we've got a hyperbola. Remember, those are hyperextended parabolas, so you're subtracting the two. Okay, a squared again is the bigger. The difference here is we're subtracting them. The a squared is always the first term here. Then we have a circle, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. hk is the center, r is the radius. And then we've got the parabolas. Those are super easy to identify because only one thing is being squared. If x squared is, if x is being squared, it's um, right side up. And if y is being squared, it is sideways. Okay, so let me show you when there's no xy term, how easy it is. So I see that x squared and y squared have the same coefficient. The coefficient is 1. They are also both positive. So I know this is going to be a circle. Okay, so we've got here, we've got a circle. Okay, and we've got coefficients of x squared equal y squared, and they are both positive. Okay. So that's going to be a circle. And you could do your discriminant test, but we haven't gotten into that yet in any videos, so we don't need it just yet. Okay, so the next thing we need is to complete the square. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use completing the square. Whenever you see something this ugly, uh, that's clearly not in standard form, we're going to group our x squareds and our x and our y squareds and our y, especially if we know it's a circle, okay? We know it's a circle, coefficients are the same, they're positive, we got to complete the square. So remember, completing the square, let me see if I have a blank sheet here. Completing the square may cause some of you to have heart palpitations. It really shouldn't. So completing the square comes from when we, okay, perfect square trinomials come from doing something like x plus 3 squared, okay? So that would become x squared plus, you know, 3x and 3x because we'd have x plus 3 times x plus 3. Remember, that's what this equals. Okay, so we'd have 6x plus 9. So we square the last, square the first, and then we double the product of the uh, outer and inner. Okay, so if you look at this relationship, it's super easy to factor. You've got a perfect square here, a perfect square here that's positive, and this middle linear term happens to be twice as much as the square root of 9. So we're basically going to take something, and we are going to say, okay, it's not a perfect square trinomial, but I want to make it one. So that's why this is helpful. We'll go into that in this problem now. Okay, this is just a reminder of what perfect square trinomials even are. Okay, so we can get rid of that. All right, so let's group our stuff together. So we've got x squared and we've got 6x. So we're going to say x squared plus 6x. Now, if you've seen my other videos on completing the square, I know I'm going to add something here to be named later. So I put a blank for it. Okay, y squared, I'm going to bring down my positive for y squared. You'll see why in a minute. So y squared, what do we got with y? So minus 4y, okay, plus something to be named later. Let's get rid of this because it's just getting in the way at this point. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and move the 3 over, the negative 3. I'm going to add it to both sides, add it to both sides. That shouldn't cause anybody too much grief. Okay, so I know you're thinking you haven't made it better. You've made it slightly worse, but I haven't. Okay, remember, when we have a perfect square trinomial, or we want one, this middle term, okay, needs to be twice as much as the square root here. So to get our new constant terms that make these both perfect square trinomials, I have to take half of the linear term. So half of the thing that is multiplied to x and square it, okay? Half of 6 is 3, so I add 3 squared. Remember, equations, got to keep them balanced. If I added 3 squared here, you better believe I've got to add it here. 
okay? You'll see why I'm leaving it as three squared here and adding it as nine in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here. I want a perfect square trinomial for this trinomial. So our linear term, so the thing multiplied to y is negative four, but we're going to square it. So this is one case where I don't care that it's negative. Half of four is two, two squared is four. So we've, we've added it to the left side of the equation. We have to add it over here. Okay, I said it was gonna get better. I know that it hasn't yet, but it will, I promise. Okay, so let's clean this up, all right? So let's say x squared plus six x plus nine plus y squared minus 4y plus 4 equals, and we can do a little bit of math, 9 plus 3 plus 4, 13 is 16, right? All right, I know, I promised it would get better, and it's not yet. All right, so this is what we want to do here. We wanna, we're want we not even doing any actual calculations. We're simply now writing these in factored form. We're just changing how they're written. So how do we do that? Well, we factor this trinomial back to algebra one, some of you eighth grade, some of you before that. Okay, we say we want factors of nine that add up to six. Well, guess what? The hint's right here. It's whatever you squared. So it's going to be the square root of this, which is x, the sign that is already here, and the thing that you squared. So it is going to be x plus three squared plus, okay, let's look. We've got y squared, so it's gonna be y. We have a negative or a subtraction symbol. What did we square? Two squared equals 16. Okay, now it's better. It finally got better. We've written it in factored form and we're actually done. This is standard form of our circle. Okay, so we have a circle and the center of our circle, remember, um, if you remember our equation that we kind of wrote, we kind of brought a paper, it said x minus h squared plus y minus k Oop, you cannot see that, that is not helpful. Okay, sorry about that. Our formula is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where our center is hk and r is the radius. So using all of that knowledge, I'm gonna bring this down so you actually can see what I write. And maybe it'll stop moving. All right, so using all of that knowledge, I see that my center for this circle even though it didn't ask, is negative three, two. Remember, it's always opposite signs. It's x minus h minus k, so the negative of h, the negative of k. And my radius, I know it didn't ask, but in case it does in future problems, is the square root of 16. No need to take the negative because it is positive four. Okay, I really hope that helped. You didn't need to use the discriminant discriminant in this one. You just needed to use your rules there and your equations and know what each of them kind of look like. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments section and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so the next problem that you want to do, you don't want to do, you can send to me.